I'll see you later, okay? I gotta go. I, I'm late. Oh, my sound. My sound. Uh, Has anybody seen my sound? Uh, hey, help here. Has anybody seen my sound? Uh, no, that's not it. That's not it. Uh, well, it's kind of a no. Uh, I mean, seriously, do you think this is my sound? Is this your sound? Yeah. It's my cookie jar! You are not helping me at all. Last place I had it, I know, well, I mean, it is, this is a big part of it. It's not it, it's not it. Oh, yes, that's closer. Is this it? A kazoo. <laughs> uh, maybe I don't have a sound. Do you have a sound? There's a chance if you put your music out there, you've been told that you don't have your own sound or you sound like fill in the blank. But for the purpose of this video, let's agree that we all have a sound and we need to go find it. Sean Leclerc is on a hot lap. He's going down the first corner. Oh, he's dropped the 20th. He's following the racing line. The racing line is not up for debate. The only chance I have of being good at this game is to follow this Ah, break too late. If I get good at following this line, that's not bad. Then when it comes time to actually race, then I can do yeah, my thing. But now I've got to stick to the speed green it up line. The speed it up the or else Lando Norris will take your place next year. Oh, I did it again. Hey, don't tell my son. Is he here? Don't tell him that I have two tickets to the sprint race at Circuit of the Americas in October. <laughs> I know it sounds counterintuitive, but I think a big part of finding our own sound is by copying other people. From the very beginning, I was always one that wanted to write my own little instrumental guitar songs as opposed to sitting down and learning somebody else's guitar riff. Yeah, I can play Sweet Home Alabama, and the first song I learned was Disarm by Smashing Pumpkins. Anybody else? But I wish that I would have spent more time, and I'm actually doing it now, learning the top 100 riffs of all time. Those are my favorite videos to watch. I don't plan on playing lead in a cover band anytime soon. I, mean, I love cover bands, that's just not for me. But there's something to learn by emulating and copying and understanding exactly what that guitarist or saxophone player felt when they were playing those particular lines. I imagine our process of figuring out is somewhat similar to the process of writing that piece of music. I'm talking into the camera. Wait, no, 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 no. What did I do wrong? It's a lid. Like that. Yay. I'm going to keep talking to these people. Yeah, I wish I would have spent more time doing that. And I still have time. But the nuance, the dynamics, not only is it making you better skill-wise, you are learning to play this part that affected and reached millions and millions of people in the world. And there's a reason why it's stuck in our heads. And we have the opportunity to mimic that. Of course, there's a crazy difficult side of things, the parts that are really hard to play. But what we find is that often some of the farthest reaching melodies are the simplest ones. And when we can play them, I think it does something to our brains. But you can only practice so much. There are a few things that I hate more in this world than Interstate 35. Siri, I want to go home, but I don't want to go anywhere near Interstate 35. I don't see any matching places. Sorry about that. I-35 is a straight shot, four hours. It can take me to Mexico and Canada if I wanted to go, but I despise it. So I'm gonna take the long way home. And the first stop is in the most amazing little tourist trap I've ever seen in my life. I think it's called Green. But they also come from the perspective of a person who likes to make a lot of different sounds. And if you watch my channel, you know this. And as someone who's written for production media, and I've written, and a lot of my work is for production music. Is this shaking with the car? Doesn't matter. It should have taken me four hours to get home, but it took nine. And I imagine you piece it together that there's no video of any substance that came from that trip. But I did stop in downtown Marble Falls 
and I walk into this amazing candy shop. Right when I walked in, this police officer, who had to have been like six foot seven, opened the door for me to walk underneath, which was, don't ever do that to a short person. There was a guitar on the wall, and he was telling me the story of this guitar. So I started filming him, only to realize that I was in the dreaded record on and off loop, and videoed my feet for the next 15 minutes. I'd probably get a copyright claim if I used it with the, yeah, with the music stuff like on, it. but that was awesome. <laughs> The story he was telling is about that guitar. It was Michael J. Fox's guitar in Back to the Future. It's the one he played on stage. I'm not exactly sure why this happened, but for a while, I was getting John Cleese recommendations in my Instagram feed every day. If we have a problem, and we, we need to solve it. Until we do, we feel inside us a kind of internal agitation, tension or uncertainty that makes us just plain uncomfortable. And we want to get rid of that discomfort. So in order to do so, we take a decision. Not because we're sure it's the best decision, but because taking it will make us feel better. Well, the most creative people have learned to tolerate that discomfort for much longer. And so, just because they put in more pondering time, their solutions are more creative. I might be using that quote to justify five extra hours on the road because I came home with nothing. But I am fairly confident that I have the characteristic that he's talking about in that video. Making hundreds of YouTube videos, that has been an experiment. Sample libraries, never saw that coming. Every single thing I've done has required so much trial and error. I can promise you that I've spent a significant amount of time second guessing every one of those experiments. But I've learned to trust my intuition. Now I try to be smart and have somewhat of an idea of what could be with these experiments but I don't know what's gonna happen when I get into it. This is the leftover from my rubber bridge guitar experiment, which I imagine quite a few you are watching this video because you saw that one. That is an example of an experiment that worked. I've been using that John Cleese video to justify my experiments, but then the algorithm fed me this video. Let me make one thing quite clear. We need to be in the open mode when we're pondering a problem. But once we come up with a solution, we must then switch to the closed mode to implement it. Because once we've made a decision, we are efficient only if we go through with it decisively, undistracted by doubts about its correctness. For example, if you decide to leap a ravine, the moment just before takeoff is a bad time to start reviewing alternative strategies. Before I started writing production music, I don't think I'm alone in this either. I had a giant folder full of half finished songs and they sounded cool, but they weren't done. People send me music all the time that's not done. So much of the song is about how it starts and how it ends and everything in between and the way the story unfolds from beginning to end. If you don't ever get to the point where you finish that song, then you're missing a majority of the process. Most of us don't have the luxury of passing our music on to mixing engineers. So much happens in the mixing phase, cutting off low end, dropping low mids, adding crazy amounts of reverb, no reverb at all. In this process, there's not one decision that gives you a sound, it's all of the decisions, and there are thousands of decisions. You have to force yourself to finish music, and this is the hard part, even if there's nobody there to listen. I'm fortunate to have you all watching my videos, and I have an outlet for my music, but that wasn't always the case. And it was difficult to share it with my friends and family who aren't gonna say the truth. But your sound is waiting in the next song, and the song after that, and the song after that. I know I've gone all over the place in this video, literally. And you might be wondering, you know, what does this have to do with finding your own sound? We're always looking for, me included, quick answers, quick fixes to our problems and the things that bother us. But this is a journey that's fun and challenging and disappointing and everything in between. And I don't know anybody that just woke up and had success or had a sound. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves to figure out things quickly, but this just isn't something you figure out quickly. Next time you hear somebody that says they're looking for somebody with their own sound, maybe they just want somebody who's still looking. Talk soon.